by, this is Anne, with more fiber designs by Anne. And today I'm going to make the center for my poinsettia flower. And these are going to be beads that are made from fabric instead of paper. They're going to be quilled. And I'll show you how they're made, how they're attached. And you can find links for how I paint the fabric, which is important to this technique. And also a lesson where I use the material magic, which is the spray stabilizer that I use for these pieces. So let's get started. The tools and materials that I'll be using are my hand-painted, gray-dated, and stiffened fabric. I'll be using this yellow-green piece. I'll also be using a cutting mat, rotary cutter, and hard acrylic rulers, and you will need two. I'll be using regular craft glue that dries clear, a container, and I use the bottom to set my glue on, a small paintbrush will be using the end to create domes, and a sharp a letter opener or knife with a very sharp blade. And cooling tools, a slotted and needle. And a container to corral the beads so they don't roll away. And some kind of packing foam and toothpicks, a toothpick for each of the beads. And I have a needle, hand sewing needle and embroidery floss. clear nail polish, and scissors with a very sharp point. Using a gradated fabric makes the cooling coils and beads much more interesting. And I can use a fabric like this that has a different color on each end and I'll get different results in the coils. These two little tiny beads were made from the exact same strips of fabric and one was coiled with the blue on the inside, started with the blue on the inside, and one has blue on the outside and they look totally different. The quilling tool, the slotted tool, is made for paper and so sometimes it won't take the fabric. Just maybe the fabric might be just slightly too thick for it. So what I do is I take, I'm using a letter opener, and I'll slide, you could use a knife blade, and slide it just into the very tip. Do this at your own risk. You don't want to break the tool or the blade that you're using. And wiggle it back and forth, and it should expand it just slightly and just enough so that the strip, and it's easier with a teeny strip, will slide into the slot and the slot will move easily like that. I'll be using a piece of fabric that is five inches long to make these coils. They end up about a quarter inch um, size bead. And to cut the fabric, you lay the larger ruler in your non under your non-cutting non hand, and you slide the other ruler right up against it, butt it against it, and leave an eighth inch sticking past your non-cutting hand and that's the strip will be an eighth inch wide and then you just cut so to do it again you butt the rulers together slide it over so there's an eighth inch past the non-cutting hand hold down firmly this keeps it from wiggling and makes your strips a little more even and it seems might seem tedious but really you get a rhythm down and it can go quite quickly, even with longer strips. And you just continue on making strips until you have all the strips you need for your beads. On the strip you decide which part you want to be on the outside or the inside of the coil. And I know that I want the green on the outside so I have a nice clean cut on the yellow. That's the part that's going to go in the slotted tool. And then I'm going to take my very, very sharp scissors on the part that's going to be on the outside and I'm going to fray that edge just a little bit. I'm kind of breaking down material magic and I'm softening the edge 
that's so when I roll it up, the end will have a nice soft place for the glue to hold and it won't, the edge won't show as much when it comes together and glues onto the coil. So then I start with the opposite side and this fabric also has a lighter and brighter side. I want the bright side on the outside but that's totally up to you. I'm going to slide it into the tool and I'll roll it in this case away from me so that that bright side's on the outside and it's okay if it goes off a little bit. Just keep rolling till I get to the end and then I can kind of squeeze it together and slide it off of the tool. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to make it into a dome later. Now I'm going to take my little container with the glue on the bottom and the needle tool and I'm going to really saturate the end. This glue's a little thick. It doesn't need to be real thick. But I want to saturate the end and what's happening, that frayed bit, is becoming softer because this is sort of diluting the, it is in fact diluting the material magic and, and causing it to become fabric again or untreated fabric again. Then, once it's pretty soft, I'll roll it onto itself and you just kind of pet it there, just gently rub it and if it, it may boil back up and just gently rub it a little bit more and as you do this it will soften that fabric and cause it to stick to itself. And then we'll just set it aside so that it can dry. I put it in the little plastic lid because if it sticks onto the plastic it's easy to pop off. Once the coil is completely dry I will take that paintbrush end and this coil is the opposite colors, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to maybe look at it and see if there's a better side. This is already kind of indented, so I'm going to take the end of the paintbrush tool and I'm going to gently rotate my hand holding the bead onto that end of the paintbrush. And you can feel it starting to come out. And be, just be kind of careful because if you pop it all the way to the center, all the way out, it's kind of hard to get back in. So we'll just keep doing that until it gets to be the dome shape that I want. And that's about that. Then I will take it and I'll slip it onto a toothpick. And I'll push the toothpick into the foam to hold it. I'll use the nail polish and I may put a little on the inside. They break off of the toothpick very easily even if it's, if it's nail polished on so that's not a worry. And I'll give it a, a good coat of nail polish. And then once it's dry I may give it one or two more coats. It just depends on how shiny I want it to be. Some people are concerned about nail polish yellowing. Well, This is the center of flowers. It's not going to be laundered and I'm not really concerned if it does turn yellow. So that's why I usually use nail polish for this, um, the beads. Then when the bead is done, I just gently twist it, pop it off of the toothpick, and it's ready to be sewn onto the flower. And we'll do that next. This is my finished piece, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on a sample. And this, on the finished piece, this is actually a layered wall hanging, so it has batting and backing. This is just a single layer. But what I would do, if it, if it, in any case, is I don't knot it, but I start. I ha what I have is um, four strands of floss. It's red and green. The red, on their own, there are six strands. I divide them so that they're just two, and then I put each of the colors, the two colors together, so I have a four strand, two color piece and just as long as you need it to be. I'm going to cut this off so that it's even. Whoop. Okay, and I'm, I am not knotting. I am not knotting it. So I'm going to come in about a half of an inch away from the center and I have seven on my other piece which meant I had a, a 
bead in the center and then I had six surrounding it but this is going to only be at three so I'll just do them sort of in a triangle and I'll pull my my thread my floss rather so that it just goes in and there's a, so there's a tail it would be sunk in the batting if this was actually um, a layered quilt and then I just take a little teeny stitch right on top of itself and that's how I'm going to secure that that won't show it'll be under a bead then I'll take my bead and this could be a beading needle, but beading needles may have too small of an eye. So you want to make sure that the needle is big enough to handle the four strands of floss and also uh, small enough that it'll go through the bead. And you just slide the bead all the way down. And then I'm going to wrap it. I like wrapping it three times, but that's up to you. And then I hold the thread, the floss, and hold the bead down with one finger and pull the needle to the hole again right back where I came up and I push it down and then I stick it in and you have to give it a little tug on the back and I pull it slowly so it doesn't knot up and then I get this wonderful little French knot right on top of the bead. Now I'm going to do it instead of, you could knot it off, I don't really usually do that if you knot it off then if one bead breaks off it doesn't take the rest with it but I'll just for this example not knot it off I'll just come back up through the top again and slide my bead on wrap the needle around three times in this case hold the bead down slide my needle to the opening the hole on the bead again and slide down, push the needle through to the back, give a gentle tug, pull slowly, and there I have two of the beads. And that's how simple it is to add wonderful beads for the center of your flowers. I'll be adding um, lessons for how I made the actual poinsettia wall hanging as soon as I get them published, so I hope that you'll stay tuned and look for that. This is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne. Thanks for watching.